Hello everybody and welcome on 3656 chat. Thank you very much for being more and more every day to follow us and chat with us. This is all for you guys. So please let me know what you think about this. All your messages are welcome and I'd be more than happy to answer them. Steven, how are you doing today? Wonderful, man. Just happy to be here. Thank you. So let's start with the chat. First question from Dean Presho. What is next after General Commander? I mean, to be honest with you, I'm working on a kind of a um, Chinese Mafia movie. I'm writing it right now. And um, that movie will be sort of a lot like attrition. It could even turn out to be attrition too. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. Next question is from Ying Yang. You are writing something in calligraphy at the beginning of the movie. What did you write? Uh, gosh, I don't remember. Um, I think I was writing something to the effect of heaven and earth or something like that. Um, I'm kind of limited to what I can write and um, I seem to remember I was writing something like that, heaven and earth, but could be wrong, but I think that's what I was writing. Next question from John Fishman. Stephen, would you ever make a series set in the Attrition universe? Absolutely. It's one of my favorite films, so I'm dying to go back to that milieu and continue it. M Big Kid 4. Hi Steven, are you a UFC fan? I know you have worked with some amazing fighters. Who is your favorite UFC fighter today? I don't really have a favorite UFC fighter today. <clears throat> uh, there's so many good ones, it's sort of hard to single anybody out. Um, but, uh, and, and then I, I, I haven't really, you know, I'm over here in Moscow, I haven't really seen a lot of uh, UFC fights lately. I gotta figure out even how I could get them here and see them. <laughs> I just haven't seen any fights for quite a while now. But is UFC something you like? I think that UFC uh, has done a lot of wonderful things, uh, you know, so there's parts of UFC that I do like a lot, yeah. John Fishman, Stephen, would you ever take your band on tour? I've taken my band on tour hundreds of times and hope to take it again. Do you plan on doing something here in Russia or maybe more in we, Asia? <clears throat> we recently had a 15-city offer here and uh, I'm not quite sure if that's going to pan out or not. If it does, that'd be great, but we are also planning on touring in Asia, so let's see what happens. Film Net One. I loved the live performance of BBQ that plays after the epilogue. I really captured, it really captured the feel of one of your live shows. At what stage in production was that decided to add this? I don't really remember, but uh, probably around the middle of the movie I decided to do something. I couldn't really get my band to come in and found some guys in Thailand that could sort of play that. Um, and, you know, I just tried to do it. It's a shuffle in D, uh, kind of my um, sort of salute to Albert Collins. Uh, and it's something that I wrote that I put on my album, um, Mojo Priest. So I just kind of tried to do the best that I could with what I had. And uh, it was fun. I mean, everybody, this was really about having fun with the cast and crew and everybody. And uh, I thought it was... Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Rooney. Hi, Steven. What are, what are some of your favorite action movies that you're watching nowadays? Um, you know, I like uh, the Kung Fu milieu. You know, I, I like Crouching Tiger and uh, anything that Yuma Ping does, I love. I love Donnie Yen. Uh, all that stuff, you know, was uh, really exciting to me. I liked uh, all of the Ip Man's. So all of those I kind of am paying a lot of attention to at the moment. 
John Fishman, would you ever star in Marvel DC movie? And as what character? I mean, I haven't read the comic book, but um, I, I would, you know, like, um, I have seen <clears throat> the comics that I thought were quite interesting. And, um, you know, anything is possible. I'm interested in anything that's deep, fascinating, compelling, you know, so anything is possible. Beast One, what is your favorite movie of all time? That's a tough question. I mean, first of all, I'd like to start off by saying that my favorite director of all time is Kurosawa. And if I had to say one movie, it would probably be Shin no Samurai, which is Seven Samurai, uh, and Redbeard, and Yojimbo. Those are really probably my favorite films. But then again, you know, there's um, something called The Last Emperor that was directed by Bernardo Bertolucci. And so the, all of those are my favorites. Rooney, how does life differ in Russia than in USA? And how is it the same? Well, I mean, there's been a lot of, you know, propaganda. And so many people, for example, people that I met who came here for the soccer finals, uh, what did they call it, the World Cup. Um, some of them said, man, we were told when we come here, it's not safe and we could be robbed. And, you know, there's people riding down the street in a don on a donkey and, you know, no good hotels and no good food. I mean, so you hear rumors like that. What's going to end up happening is three million people came in to Russia, primarily to Moscow, but all over really, because the cup played all over the place. And I believe three million people will go back to their prospective countries and talk about what a great experience it was. And certainly everybody I talked to said the same thing. It's a very, very beautiful country. Some of the best restaurants in the world, amazing architecture, amazing culture, amazing people. Uh, I just think that, you know, Russia is a place where if you're interested in this kind of old European culture, even ancient culture, it's a must to come and see. What's the difference between Russia and America? Well, I guess it's the people and the culture and uh, the architecture and the food. They're all very, very different. America is also spectacular and has uh, all the amazing things that they do here, just in a different way. Hi, Stephen. It's Marco from StevenSeagal.net again. Do you get to pick up your own band members when going on tour? How many times do you rehearse with them? So if it's a big tour, we like to do three, four weeks. Of rehearsals. Do I get to pick my own band members almost every time? Uh, it's probably a nine to ten piece band and um, you know I'm pretty particular about who's playing with me when I go on tour so that's how I do it. Nice. Yeah. So you really control? Yeah they have to be. I you know I'm kind of a really, really sick fanatic when it comes to perfection in terms of great players. I mean, the last album that I did that I'm not finished with yet, I had Vinnie Caliud on drums, Abe Laboreal on bass, uh, Marty Greb on keys, David Lindley on slide. I mean, these are, in my opinion, legends of the legends. And so these are the kind of people I try to play with. Yeah, you cannot go wrong when you play with uh, people like this. That's right. Mm. Yeah. More to this. Hello, Stephen. Will there, will there be any broadcast of Zara Fight, which you are president of in the US? You know, I got a text message or email tonight on this, uh, which I didn't get to read yet, but it looks like there will be another Zara Fight coming up in October. Uh, so, yes, it will be... 
going on right away. And uh, when I finish this interview, I'm going to probably try to get on the phone and get the details because I have a lot of work to do with that too. Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough that just today you were... Uh, just now, right five minutes before I started the interview. Wow. Yeah. Dida Dakers. When you, <laughs> that's a familiar name. <laughs> that's a familiar name. When you start a movie, do you always get to pick up your own cast? Or is that the producer's job? Well, I produce almost everything I've ever done, so usually I get to be involved in that. Film Nut One. I'm enjoying reading your debut novel, The Way of the Shadow Wolves. Could you tell us a bit about your experience writing the book? The book is really about what it says in the title. It says The Way of the Shadow Wolves. Uh, and um, the Shadow Wolves are a pretty secret organization of uh, police officers that have probably federal status on the reservations, you have to be an American, Native American, to even be in the wolves. Uh, and um, they are probably the best trackers in the world. And um, they track the cartels and all other drug smugglers that go out on the desert. They're pretty feared and pretty amazing. And I wear their patch and Got to be with them, ride with them, track with them, do all the bad things, the bad guys with them. Um, and it talks, then it says, in the deep state and the hijacking of America. So we really talk about those people in the deep state and how they have hijacked America, literally. And that's what the book is about. And it wasn't meant to be a fun book, it's a kind of a heartbreaking book if you look at the depth of the damage that's been done by certain people to the United States of America. Next question from Beast One. How was your recent trip to Tokyo? Well, that was a kind of a back-channel diplomatic uh, trip where um, I was kind of trying to discuss uh, the peace treaty with uh, some of the highest people in the Japanese government. The peace treaty has not been signed, it's never been signed between Japan and Russia, so some people could say therefore they're still at war. But Prime Minister Abe and President Putin have decided that <clears throat> that's going to be signed. And so there's some people very high up in Japan who have big trust in me. And um, they originally called me in to discuss this, <clears throat> which I did. And so I'm just trying to help with that also. More to this. You were recognized as a Tulku in 1997, I believe. Have you ever visited the place in Tibet associated with your past? Well, yes, I have. I've been to Tibet and traveled all over Tibet. Beast One, did you know you wanted to be an actor when you were a child? No. <laughs> Never even thought about it. Mas Oyama, hello, Stephen. What do you think about sci-fi movies and would you ever consider playing in one? Well, there's stuff like the original Matrix where there's a lot of martial arts uh, in them and I like that. I, I mean, unless there was something kind of Zen or martial arts or something kind of compelling mystical stories, uh, I probably wouldn't do it, but if any of those elements was in there, I probably would. Ronnie, Stephen, would you teach your son martial arts? Does he like learning those disciplines from you? I am teaching my youngest son. I've taught all my sons martial arts, you know, at one level or another. I'm teaching my youngest son martial arts uh, now. Uh -huh. And he likes it? I think he does, yeah. I'm teaching him Kung Fu and uh, a little bit of Aikido. Dida Dakers, you have made so many movies. Are there some movies you regret doing, maybe because of some problem with producer or bad experiences on set? 
You have to understand that in making a movie, it always has to be a team effort. And there's never, or almost never, one person that's in charge. So, but there's always somebody above you and above me. And so I've been on movies where the people above me were despicable people that didn't really care about the movie as much as just their own maniacal, egotistical interests. And so, yeah, I made some bad movies in my life, I'm ashamed to say, but I've also made some good ones. I don't know anybody who's only made good ones if they've been at it for long enough. It's like life, you know, you do the best you can and you win some and you lose some. I made some bad ones and I made some good ones. H-R-D-A-P-D. -D. Any personal interest in other less known martial arts? Yeah, uh, as a martial arts master of certain martial arts, I'm interested in all martial arts at least all martial arts that I consider to be martial arts, and um, would like to be learning until the day I die, and after the day I die, I would like to continue to learn. Nice. Is there one martial art that people don't really know about that you could name? That you... Well, there's a bunch of... Uh, it just really depends on what region you're from in the world, because... Um, if you start talking about Indonesian martial arts in America, many people wouldn't know what you're talking about, or even Filipino. But, you know, if you go there, of course, they might not know about some of the martial arts from different parts of the country, so. Dida Dekers. It was great. A lot of Dida Dekers, man. <laughs> yeah, Dida Dekers loves you. It was great to see you on the big screen again in Machete a few years ago. How did you get involved in this project? Well, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Robert is a, is a little bit of a friend of mine, and um, there's an actor who played Machete, who's also a good friend of mine, and he did a movie with me probably, I don't know, 20, 25 years ago. He said, hey, how would you like to do this movie with me? And and Robert, and I said, man, I would love to. And so we arranged a meeting uh, with Robert to talk about the role. And then he started talking to me about me playing <clears throat> a narco cartel guy. I said, man, that, that's really interesting for me, having you know, been a police officer for all these years. And uh, it's kind of the opposite of what I would ever have thought about. And he said, well, that's why I think it'd be really interesting for you to do that, you know. Uh, and so we tried it. It was a fun movie to make, you know. Really. Mats Oyama, Steven Seagal, are you into technology? Do you play any video games? I'm embarrassed to say that my nine-year-old son is better than me at all of this stuff. I'm kind of computer illiterate. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think that all kids are, are better than us in this kind of things. Ronnie, Stephen, how did you meet your wife? I was in Mongolia uh, meeting with people on uh, financing a movie. We wanted to, at that time, finance the movie Chinggis Khan, which to this day I would like to finance, and I'm um, still looking for someone who will put up the money for that one. But I was there meeting with financiers, or potential financiers, for the movie Chinggis Khan. And she was an interpreter for me. And, uh, you know, we met and got very interested in each other. And one thing led to another. Would you like your son to be an actor? No. <laughs> no, I'd rather he be a martial arts master or, or something like that. Dida Dakers, how was your experience on making into the sun in Tokyo? I mean, you know, for me, the, I, like, I like this question. It's a great question because um, even though it may be kind of dated, I thought it was a pretty good movie at the time. And um, I really enjoyed making the movie. I enjoyed being in Japan. Um, and it was kind of the first that I know of anyway, where we were mixing Chinese mafia and Japanese mafia together in this kind of, you know, 
milieu of stories that were based on things, some things that had actually happened. And so I really enjoyed the experience and I thought Into the Sun is a pretty cool movie. Jennifer Ankley. Hello, Stephen. I'm curious about the characters in the beginning of the film. Why does Axe carrying on a conversation in English as Chen Man and Q Wang Ling speak Thai? Well, I think they were speaking Mandarin, not Thai. Uh, but, you know, you have to have, in order to make real box office and real money in the box office, you have to have a movie that's primarily in English, otherwise it becomes a foreign film and you have to subtitle the whole thing. Number one. And number two, the, the, you know, this isn't the only movie where that's done. Uh, and then when this movie goes to China, they'll probably dub the whole thing in Mandarin, but uh, that's kind of the reason why we did it the way we did it. Film Not One. You've extensively traveled the world making films in many countries. Where in the world would you like to make a film that you have not done so already? Boy, that's a tough question because I've made movies in probably almost all the places I've wanted to. So, <laughs> but, um, oh, come to think of it, I haven't really shot here in Russia. So I'd love to shoot in Russia. Nice. And what a beautiful country to shoot. Very beautiful country. Mm -hmm. A lot of really, really amazing locations and great characters. Dida Deckers. Would you ever want to direct your own movie again? And is it difficult to direct a movie and at the same time to star in it? It is very difficult to do both. Directing alone is a tremendous responsibility. Would I do it again? Yeah, for the right project, I would. More to this. Last question before I have to sign off. I am in Gaijin, who group in Tokyo from four years old to 15. We lived in Ropongi, 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 in the American Embassy compound. Compound. Had you ever been there? Probably, yeah, yeah. Did you I used to visit the Marine Guards, you know, there and at every embassy, and so yeah. I mean, I love Tokyo. I was raised there. My first. Uh, area in Tokyo was Shinjuku, and then from Shinjuku I went to Osaka, but uh, Tokyo is one of my favorite places in the world, and uh, it's a spectacular place. It was my first time following you there to Tokyo, mm -hmm. and honestly, I was impressed with the people. They are so nice. So nice, open-minded. I was impressed. Most polite people in the world. Yeah, completely agree. Really? <laughs> wow. Well, Steven Seagal, thank you very much once again for being thank with you, us. Thank you all, thank you all, thank you all, thank you all. And you guys, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter to spend more time with Steven Seagal. <laughs>